You all know that I broke my neck in a diving accident so many years ago. And as a quadriplegic, I will be the first to admit that waking up in the morning, oh my goodness, and just getting emotionally ready for the day, it's such a huge battle. But the good thing is, it makes me wake up needing God desperately. Because in the morning, while I am still in bed, my head is on the pillow and my eyes are closed, but I am facing, I know, a 90 minute routine of someone coming into my bedroom, giving me exercises, a bed bath, corseting my body, getting me dressed, sitting me up in my wheelchair, and so much more. And I tell you what, while my head's on the pillow, it feels so overwhelming. So in the morning, I honestly feel like I cannot do quadriplegia, but it makes me pray, Lord, I can do all things through you. I can't do quadriplegia, but I, I can do all things through you as you strengthen me. And you wanna know something? He does just that. By 7.35 in the morning, I've already got joy sent straight from heaven. And I'm sure this is why the Apostle Paul told us to boast in our afflictions and, and glory in our infirmities, because these are the very things that force us to rely hard on the grace of Jesus Christ every single morning. And maybe the really disabled people are the ones who, when they wake up in the morning, they, they, they jump out of bed, they, they take a quick shower, they get dressed, they scarf down breakfast, and then they, they, they rush out the door on automatic cruise control. Did you know that if you live like that, the Bible says that God is against you? He resists the proud, the Bible says. And of course, you know that the proud are simply those who think they can do life on their own. But God gives grace to the humble. And the humble are simply those who wake up in the morning recognizing how much we need the Lord. That is me. That's me every morning, and that's definitely Jennifer Barrick. And I pray that it is you as well. The Barrick family discovered that God will take you through if you can stand the pull. Well, what he's brought them to is truly amazing. Hope Out Loud is a family ministry to people who are hurting in the midst of tragedy. We've had half the family with us this week and previously. Uh, Linda is the wife of Andy. They've been married 24 years. And actually in this book, there's a picture of them as children. Were you dating at 14 and 16? I was 14 <gasps> oh. with braces when we met. Mm -hmm. Precious. Um, your children, Joshua, is now 16. 16, he gets his driver's license this week. Very yes. exciting, yeah. and Jennifer is 20. Yes. Um, now we, we've left the men in Virginia, but they've been popping up in these segments. And our thanks again to Johnny and Friends TV for these wonderfully produced segments that have opened up so much more of your life and your experience. Uh, I debated whether to show this, but I, I, I have a, a mission in mind. This is the men returning to the scene of the accident. Um, just trying to think, how much later is it? Three and a half Three years, years later. Three mm. years, five months later. And, uh, well, let's just go with Josh and Andy. <sighs> See, our wreck was kind of like an explosion, so... I mean, there's got to, there's some pieces probably still in here. I mean, I mean, we can go look and try to find them. Of course, you know, it's been three years and five months, but there's probably some stuff in there. <laughs> yeah, just be careful. Here's a something big metal. This is our van. There it is. Oh, careful. Use the van to push it off you. That is a portion. We had a the gray. Was that would that be That's it? a part of the uh, yeah. It's the, a Toyota Sienna Symphony van. We had a gray it was van. Exactly that color. That's it. So Can this you find my cell phone, it's in there somewhere. <laughs> 
Linda and Jan, you are reliving this, often with the help of the men, for audiences and individuals. I is it difficult to go back to that car crash? Actually, the, the night of the wreck is not as traumatic for us yes. as it is for our family and You don't our remember it Because much we don't remember no. being hit. Joshua remembers his dad yelling, watch out, and he remembers the smells and the sight mm -hmm. and, and the sirens. But um, Jennifer and I and Andy, we were so injured that all, all of that is pretty well wiped from our memory. Yes. We have more the trauma of the long journey. Yes. Yes. And where our friends don't like to relive the night, we relive every day just yes. in you know the brokenness and, and the mm -hmm. physical pain that we all have. And I will say too, you know, all of the rescue workers, they were volunteers. We lived out mm -hmm. in the county and um, the volunteer workers, many of them had to go to counseling. Oh, it was yes. very traumatic. They had never seen anything mm -hmm. so horrific and not knowing who lived and who died and, and what mm -hmm happened mm -hmm. to us and they are all so excited to read the book and just to see what God has done and mm -hmm. how he has spared John's oh, yes. life. So much here. We just have two more segments but I, I said I had a mission in showing that segment. Do you have people in your audiences who have post-traumatic stress? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are many yes. people that can't get past, mm -hmm. you know, their problems or where they're at or yes. um, maybe, you know, they, they keep reliving it in their mind. Mm -hmm. and you Trapped know, in fear Trapped sometimes. in fear. Yes. And Jen has a very good friend who's struggling with a vision problem right now and she can't get yes. past that. And so she no. will text Jen and say, Jen, you know, how do you deal with having yes. vision problems because I'm just so sad I might not be able to drive and, mm -hmm. you know, my whole life is going to change. And I love what Jen said her on the phone the other day she said well you just need to make a thankful list you know of all the things yes. that you're thankful for praise mm -hmm. God for the good things change yes. your perspective instead of just focusing on that dwelling. one thing yes. instead of dwelling on the one thing you can't yes. do and the one thing that's bad mm -hmm. because for Jennifer it wasn't just one thing it was a hundred things that she yes. couldn't do and and so we had to mm -hmm. just focus on the positive focus on thanking God and I know for Andy and I one of those scriptures in first Thessalonians that we've had to live um, I believe it's first Thessalonians 5 but it says to give thanks always to pray mm -hmm. continually for this is the will of God for you mm -hmm. And so often we want to know, what is God's will for my life? Well, His yes. will is that we pray continually and that we give mm -hmm. thanks in everything. And that's very hard to do. Yes. Um, you know, we're not thankful it happened to yeah. us, but God calls us to still praise Him in the midst. Praise in Him in the storm. some of those days you were in excruciating pain. Yes. And praising Him was the only thing we, the only way we could survive. Because when you sing a praise song, it energizes Jen. Mm -hmm. It would, it would give us the energy we needed. Um, the power of prayer is huge. And I mm -hmm. love how Jen talks about prayer. Tell what it is. It's our secret. You'll see. Oh, I was telling my mom the other day that prayer is our secret weapon. Uh -huh. yeah. And that prayer, I firmly believe, is what saved my family November fifth. Yeah, it's and all over the story. It is prayer, prayer. So. And then Jen will remind me, Mom, when we pray, we forget who we're talking to. Great we are I talking am. to the Great I Am. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And we're entering mm -hmm. His throne room. Yes. And if we could just picture that we're entering That's the throne room of the King of Kings, and what a privilege that is. That we're delighted have. to hear from yes. us. Oh, that yes. That any time, any place, we can cry out and talk. Him. Mm -hmm. What a privilege that we have and, and we don't even begin to tap into it.